everyone, this is Stephen Dempsey. I'd say that having a basic knowledge of how masks work is essential to getting the most out of On One Photo Raw 2018. Think about a mask like it's a volume control for a filter. When the mask is white, it's at the highest volume or fully visible. When the mask is black, the volume is turned off or fully transparent. Anything between white and black will vary the degree of visibility of the filter. But don't worry about that part for now. We'll get into those details in another lesson. For this tutorial, we'll keep it really simple. On every filter in the effects module, there's a mask pre-filled with white by default. If you don't use masks, you probably never noticed. Let's choose a photo and take a look. I'm going to go into effects directly. Let's apply a tone enhancer and take a look at this elusive mask. First I'll make a few adjustments so we can see the effect. That's good. If I click on the mask icon, the mask and various options are revealed. As you can see, it's pre-filled with white, so when I apply this filter, it's at 100% of its intensity. In this case, the entire image shows all the adjustments I made. Remember, when the mask is pure white, it applies the filter at 100%. So if white is 100% opacity, what happens if I invert the mask? To invert means I'm changing the color to its exact opposite, which is black. Now the filter has disappeared. Why is that? If a mask is solid black, it will be 100% transparent, or the volume will be turned down to zero, making the filter invisible. Let's take a look at another example. I'll go back to Browse and choose a different image. I'll choose this one, and I'll go back to Effects. This time I'll choose a dynamic contrast filter. And I'll crank it way up so you can see what's going on. In this instance, the filter is overwhelming the entire image, and I only want to selectively apply it to the door. Let's open the mask options and invert the mask. That turns it black. Now the filter is transparent or invisible again. So how do I apply the dynamic contrast filter selectively? I'm going to use the masking brush over here on the left menu. Try to think of this as you would a real paintbrush. If I choose paint in right here, which makes the brush color white, remember white will reveal the filter's effect. I'll literally paint the filter onto the image. So let's see how that works. I'm revealing the dynamic contrast effect with every brush stroke. Because I only want to apply it to the door, I'm only going to paint inside that area. In the list of masking options is one that allows you to view the actual mask. So let's take a look. Now you can see the white I'm painting in to reveal the filter's effect. I'll just fill out these parts I missed. Everything that's black is transparent, so the effect is invisible in this particular area. There are many different ways you can use masks, and I'll be creating additional tutorials with more examples. It's just too large a subject to cover in one sitting. If you're new to masks, I'd encourage you to practice the basics first until you have a good understanding. Before I go, I'm going to switch gears and share a handy tip. I'll go back to Browse and choose a new image.
When you have an image like this that has converging lines, you'll sometimes want to straighten them. For that, I'll hop over to Develop and go to Transform. I'll go to Show More and click on Transform. I can use the horizontal and vertical sliders to straighten out the lines. I find it hard, however, to do this without a grid to guide me, but there doesn't seem to be an obvious way to view a grid. So what can you do? Let's activate the Crop tool. It defaults to a grid of thirds, but that's not adequate for my needs. I want something more detailed. To change the grid, click Option on a Mac or Alt on a PC, and a more detailed grid appears. Let's go back to Transform, and now I can make my adjustments with the help of this handy grid. About there. I'll crop in these adjusted corners now. And now I have much straighter lines. So that's it. I hope you found this tutorial helpful, and as always, feel free to ask if you have any questions. Until next time, thanks for watching.